Hi, Simon Trezellian here, former Special Forces Operator, and I said in the previous uh, video that I'll be giving some tips of how you could thrive and survive in a live shooter situation as we have seen in Paris and San Bernardino and unfortunately may see again. So I'm going to be showing you some legal weaponry, so in case you cannot uh, in your state have a concealed carry permit, so if you cannot carry a firearm, I'm going to show you how you can protect yourselves, your loved ones. So I'm here in a garage with a melon, and we're going to be using that to demonstrate some of the implements uh, that I brought here today. All of these are available, uh, all of these are street legal, uh, all of these can be bought by anyone that's over 18 and I'll be going through those and just to show you exactly what you can do. Now, live situ live si live <clears throat> now, live shooter situation, what is going to happen is that you've got to be aware, there's a lot of really good videos out at the present time, mostly put out by law enforcement and I didn't want to go over that and it's all about whether you run, whether you hide or whether you fight, you have three options. Now, I'm not a runner, I'm certainly not a hider, you know, and essentially I'm a fighter. So I'm going to concentrate on the fighting element. Yes, you can run, there are disadvantages to that. Remember, a shooter has a ranged weapon. They're, they are built for range, whether it be short range or long range. They're built for range. The more range you put in, initially, the more problems you're going to have until you get out of that range. Okay, so there is a time where you become really, really under threat. If you're hiding, it's only a matter of time. You're waiting for the time that the police find you, or you're waiting for the time that the shooter finds you. Okay, so it's, it's roulette. Which one are you going to do? With the fighting element, you make an absolute decision to aggressively take on the shooter. Now, what is going to happen is a number of things that are going to happen in regards to the shooter's mentality when that happens. They're not expecting you to retaliate. So if you can close the gap very quickly and you can take direct aggressive action, especially as a group, you are more likely to survive. But it has to be direct, it has to be aggressive, it has to be absolutely 120%. So I'm going to do a little exercise first off. Now when you're looking at this on your screen, I want you to go one, two, bang, and tap the screen where you see me. That's where the bullet is going to land. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That is like one, two, bang. One, two, bang. One, two, bang. That's what a shooter is going to do. So I'm here. You are the shooter. So what I'm going to do is to close the gap, remember, Put your fingers on the, on the screen now where I am and you're going to go one, two, three and tap and try and get me, okay? Okay, are you ready? Go. So as you can actually see, very quickly, you would not even better get a shot off. You may get one, it's likely to go either side. You've got to move aggressively towards and close that gap. As soon as you get inside, the person, he cannot shoot you, okay? As soon as you're actually inside, you can close that person down. So let's look at some of the weaponry that you could carry into a place like a restaurant or an airport or an aircraft that you could actually utilize very, very effectively. The first I'm gonna show you is this, and this is what they call the CIA ice pick made of a particularly hard material, which is polypropylene, um, with diamond encrusted, so it's actually harder than steel. As you'll see, it's got a diamond tip as well, and it's triangular. It makes for a very, very powerful piercing instrument. This will go through any type of metal detection, it will go through radar, and you can actually have it inside your sleeve. Another variation is the jungle spike. This can be placed in computer bags. Obviously, you'd want to be taking the, um, the actual ring off. The ring goes through the finger and allows you to get greater penetration. As you can see, very quickly, you can actually create some massive damage 
with utilising a spike, stronger than steel's. This is called the Spartan, this is my actual weapon of choice, and it's a very powerful, both slashing and stabbing weapon. But again, you're not going to get that through an airport, you're not actually going to get that into a restaurant. Another option is the Karambit. Now this is a different form of knife. As you see, it has a ring there that the thumb goes into, and therefore can create a fist with a blade and a puncher. So with this, you can actually be able to slash and to create massive damage. Again, if you're closing that gap really, really quickly, being able to protect yourself and creating massive slashing action, the Karambit is a very, very powerful weapon. But again, it's metal. You're not going to get that through metal detectors. So next, we have what is called the Delta Dart. With this, it has a chain, goes around the neck and you can wear underneath a shirt with any problems pull down and you have an offensive fighting instrument that can be used for stabbing and slashing so again this is actually made of polypropylene it's very very hard it's harder than steel very sharp indeed and as we can see slashing or stabbing it just goes straight away so very few people are going to get up with one of those. Something similar to that is what they call the jungle spike. The jungle spike is slightly larger uh, and it has a ring that you can place your thumb through. And with this, again, very similar, the ability to be able to just quickly thrust. And the reason that we use a melon is that a melon is exactly the same constitution and density as a human head. So if this goes into a melon, it's going to go into someone's head. So that's the dart. Uh, most of you would have seen one of these. It's a Kubaton, uh, which is uh, an instrument of attitude adjustment. And with this, again, it's great for a key ring. It actually becomes legal as soon as you put a key on it. And with this, is a way of being able to get out of locks. But that's not the type of thing you're really going to want to try and use against an armed gunman. But good to have anyway. This thing here, this is what we call the pocket shark. And it looks like a pen. In fact, it is a pen. It's a marker pen. So, it actually unscrews and is actually a marker pen. Now this is solid polypropylene. So it's powerful. And again, just like you saw with the Kubaton, something like this will be straight away into someone's head, straight away into their sternum. So again, very powerful to be able to use. You can take that anyway. You can get on a plane with that, go into a restaurant with that. A torch. With this type of torch, it's a combat torch. As you see here, it has um, bevels. That is actually to use to scrape so that you can actually scrape a person's face, actually uh, hold their DNA within there as well. It's uh, made of uh, aircraft grade aluminium and can be used in exactly the same way. You can take a torch anywhere. Uh, we have the combat pen, the TAC pen. With this, it's a nice little light. It actually is a pen. It has a glass breaker and it has, as we can see there, same DNA catcher. So again, it can be used to thrust, to be able to take down, but what you're looking to do is to get in very close and hurt. You're looking to stab to the eyes, to all of the, the very soft centers. If you work on the theory that anything in the human body that is angular, like knees, elbows, they go against that. That's what you do. You break them by pushing against that using physics. Anything that is soft is what you po poke things into and that is what takes out a human being. Another thing that you can get away with is of course pepper spray. And you see people running with this, jogging and pepper spray would normally last probably about eight feet. So again, it sprays and it will incapacitate someone. You, these are totally street legal, you can take them anywhere you wish, fit into a handbag, fit into a pocket, 
If this is sprayed into an attacker's face, they will not be shooting you. So again, these are legal items that you can carry. Don't carry that on a plane. Don't carry that into some areas, because it, in the, certainly in some countries it's considered a firearm. But you can carry this for your protection. This as well, nice little dubri. And again, can be worn over the head. It looks just like some uh, gothic implement. But again, straight into the hand there, it becomes a punching implement, which can be very, very powerful indeed. So these are the types of things that you can carry pretty much anywhere. You might get a bit of a problem with that on a plane, but it's worth thinking about. Now, the other thing that we're going to be looking at in the future is combat gloves. These are gloves which uh, are going to be fireproof, knife proof, and use Kevlar. They're going to have liquid Kevlar on the knuckles. These are slightly weighted so that when you do hit someone, they go down. And they're very, very powerful indeed. With the ones that we're going to be producing probably in the next year, they will actually have Kevlar knuckles and a glass breaker and will be able to be used very powerfully to take out assailants. So again, just by having gloves, you can wear them in airports, but look what this does. That's what happens to a human head when you hit. When you hit with these, they stay hit. Be safe, be prepared, be aware. Know what is legal, know what you can carry, and always make sure that you have the ability to defend yourself and those that you love.